All right, ladies, let's get into this uh, row crop special by JMF Farms. As you can see, I got curves going on with my rows that follow the planter. I'd like to say special thanks to JMF for helping me out and walking me through this. It is simple if you have modding background and know what your tools you're using and everything. And it is also pretty easy, I would say, for newcomers if you guys follow along in this video. At the end of this video, I will also show you how to make planters work for row crop ready. The big thing is the planter has to be set up correctly. You have to have the right fruit types in. And they do not work vice versa. So therefore, keep an eye on what's going on here and pay attention if you want to make a map yourself row crap the next thing is we have not tested or messed with the numbers or calculations for a 4x map it is in the works but right now we are only on a standard size map a 2km by 2km map more to come on all this but once again special thanks to jmf odom farms and the delta south modding this is the step in the right direction to make game even more realistic than what I could have thought. So a little show off here. You can see the curves flow right around. And I advanced the growth so I got some weeds in here. But you guys decide if you can handle it or not. And we get this beautiful no-till look to it based on how we set everything up and I'm going to go a couple more growth or er, growth stages and I think this is one that's really noticeable just, just imagine being in the combine, coming around and following your endros, or around a waterway, or trying to chop this. I mean, if you're doing a pull type or, or cornhead style chopper, you're going to have to follow the rows. You can't just cut right across them. Soybeans, on the other hand, we all know we go at an angle around them. But pay attention in the video, and I will show you guys how to bring this into your map, and you can add this to any planner you want. I'll show off this planner a little more later on in the video. Alright ladies, let me start off by saying you should have some background knowledge with a text editor, paint.net, and or GIMP, uh, GRLE converter, and Giants editor. I am going to kind of burn right through this and show you guys, especially for the guys that normally do modding and mapping, you guys should follow along and make it pretty quick and simple for you guys to make your map real crap ready. Now, go ahead and get, for the people that don't know, paint.net, GIMP, and Notepad++ can be free. Google search it. You'll find it. Boom. Bam. Thank you, ma'am. Giants Editor and the GRLE Converter are on GiantsDevelopernetwork.com. Make an account. It's a free download. Go ahead. So I don't need to explain to you guys where your data folder is and whatnot. It's somewhere in your map. It could be named something else. It could be something different for you newcomers. It's all about your file paths. And with that file path, you can put the folders wherever you want. So we'll jump right into it and burn right along. Where's my converter? All right, so now that we got the PNGs deleted, we're after the GDMs. Like you guys know that the Giants editor makes itself or converts from a PNG. I'm going to quickly convert these. Hopefully you are using a map that you know runs well and is correct sizes. So I am using the 4096 as you can see GDMs. The math is all different. Thanks for JMF for telling me all this. He sat down, figured it all up, and whatnot. We are after the culty dens density and the fruit density right now. 
I believe the culty density was from 19 and the new one would be ground density from 22. So we have them converted. I am going to delete the GDMs and open these with paint.net. Now, if you don't know the key binding real quick, it's control R to resize and I'm going 8192. And yes, that is a 4X size. But we have to ramp it up to get the rows more narrow. Yeah, we're, we're just adding more pixels. Put it that way. I'll leave all the boring stuff away. The biggest thing is resampling nearest neighbor. This is going to minimize the work that you got to do. But I'm pretty sure we're still going to have to repaint some of the field edges in Giants Editor to make everything look right. Let me maximize this again and then we're after the fruit density same thing nearest neighbor perfect control s perfect now you're going to open up your map uh i3d with notepad plus plus well if it ever decides to open this is easy for me because usually once you grab the one, the other one's right next to it. Usually. So we're already on PNG and where's the culty? Just seen it right there. All right, we're golden. So now I'm going to search for soybeans will be the easiest one to do because this is the only one that we really got to change. I always put the S on for some reason. It's not, there's no S. So once again, click on the number, control D. Now, you guys need to have the No Creek Farms map downloaded. This is the perfect example. You're gonna come into the uh, maps, map FR, foliage folder. You want maize two, maize, and row crop soybeans. Maize is row crop corn. Maze 2 is the row crop silage corn I've done up, and row crop soybeans are obviously row crop soybeans. So you're going to copy those files and bring them over into your foliage folder, which I forgot to do on this version of it. And I am going to replace my corn and silage corn, or in other words, maize 2, already on here. Done. Now, this is where we get in here. And you guys got to be very careful about your spelling. And I did that wrong. And you also want to be very careful about your capitalization. And we're going to be looking at these numbers a lot. So make sure you remember that. We're adding another crop type to the map. Since we already have maize in here for corn and my silage corn right here, we are good. The big one with this, we're at a limit with giants on the game on how many crops we can have in here. We have 32 if you count weed and stone. So if you have 30 right here, you need to choose one that you want to overwrite. So I'm just going to choose sugarcane because I never play with it. I don't do it. Okay, fine. Once you have pasted the real crap soybean in, we want to keep an eye on your number. If you change and delete one of these lines, move anything in this without adding it to the bottom, it's just going to bump everything down on the color scale. And that will put canola, say, where wheat was. Or vice versa, you got grass here and you throw... The soybeans up here it's going to put soybeans where the grass is so this is hugely important if you guys are doing a brand new crop and you're just not replacing one of these you got to make it a number that's not in here I usually add three zeros but we are at 263 copy that come back up here to my row crop we are going to paste it right there 263 done we hit save now you want to go back to your map 
and we are going to open up the map i3d and giants editor now that it has loaded i want you to guys pop your little console up make it big we are looking for errors with our crop and errors with our G gdms or now pngs which i am not seeing there's soybeans there's my real crap soybeans boom it's in i don't have an error over here or nothing so now we are going to click save and we are good to go you want to come back here and if you guys added the three zeros in to make it a non-existent number in the i3d file click yes it will change the number it's okay because it will change the number down below also Now, the big thing why I told you guys to copy these XMLs, there are things changed in here, and there's no real need to worry about it. But we got a few more things to take over, and I highly suggest you guys follow the way I do it, rather than just pulling the entire file. Now, I use soybeans as the piece to go back and forth, we are on Monteith, so we're on the wrong one. I forgot to, here we go. So from No Creek, you're gonna hit your map fill types and you're gonna search for row crop soybeans. We need this whole fill type since it's already, or since it's not in here, but corn is. If you guys don't have silage corn and you want it, go ahead and take it. Now just remember we're going to pop over here do our fill types and this is why I have cracked corn and stuff commented out because it's in here if we wanted to use it and then scroll all the way to the bottom of your fill types you're going to find the categories we need to make sure that we got this and I take the name this is how the game reads it this is what it shows in the game make sure you guys are taking the name and not the title and paste it wherever you got soybeans and that is usually why I keep that highlighted so it'll highlight them all and then I highly suggest another feature is to paste it down into your sound so you get all the sounds with the combine and everything and there you have the fill types so now we are going to go back to no creek and we are going to grab fruit types now this is the same thing you got to copy the row crop soybeans now with this said if you guys are adding the silage corn and everything you're obviously going to want to grab that down towards the bottom i'll show you more Go to your map fruit types usually doesn't really matter where you put it in here as long as you get it under the fruit types and above the bottom fruit types tag and then once again you want the name which i forgot to grab and you are going to paste this in for your Corn headers, where however you want to do it. If you want to be able to mow it, sure. If you want to be able to chop it, sure. Go ahead and make sure you put that in there. Um, am I missing one? I am not. So once again, save. If you guys are playing with precision farming I highly suggest you add in this in it is in your map dot XML and Monteith you'll see it I have added a few into no Creek as well Monteith has quite a few more with the soil requirements and then I also have the seed rates real crop soybeans we are gonna just use the base game soybeans and if you unzip precision farming mod you'll find the base 
in here and just search soybeans. And I mean, you can adjust it however you feel, but this is the base for it. This stuff goes into your map XML, which you have to have it set up this way in order for it to work. That is only if you guys are using precision farming on your map. Outside of that, you are good to go. And then don't forget to grab your guys' uh, growth calendar. You guys can set this up however you want. I always grab the one they got. Mine might be a little bit different than yours. I've been messing with it. And do it however you want. But I usually try to stick them together somewhere. And open your map in game to double check. I highly suggest testing everything. And it helps if you buy the land. Oh, wow. Oh, where am I? Right here. Planner's working good. Besides that one row unit. Two row units. I think I got the work areas a little too small. Biggest thing you're testing right now are the curves. So make sure you turn. Don't just go straight. Make sure you turn. Now, I am also going to do corn. That is one that we mess with. And now with easy dev controls, let me just reposition. I am going to go down here and we are going to click advanced growth. There you got it. I got curved rows. Pretty simple. Soybeans doesn't look bad at all in the curves. Corn, I can tolerate, but we still get some jump in here and there with the rows when you kind of hit the 90 degree angles like it plants normally. And then in the curves, it's kind of doubled up. But it is going to change your gameplay. So let's roll right into doing our planner here. I want to thank Extremely Western Modding, part of the Western Iowa modding team, for this planner. He was working on it, and he has given me permission to release it. And I think I will release his version and my real crop ready version of the planter once it is finished. These are super simple to do. So I literally take the work area, the one that's already set up, and I'll show you what I do here real quick. You go down to the first row unit. It all depends on how your planner's set up also. But it is fairly easy and quick to do. I zero everything out in the parent transform group of the work area. And then to start fresh, I just zero everything back out. And I'm going to put this right at the grid level is what I usually do. And then I'm going to go 0 0.003 is what I like to do. Let me make sure I went the right way. Which I did. And then for the width, once you zero it out, it'll show up on the screen. Bam, there she is. I forgot to move the wrong one. So I bring the work areas down to the grid. That's a little easier. My bad, ladies. My bad. So that way we just keep that all at zero. This one... I'm going to go negative 0 0.003 because we want it to move to the right. Now, I've been contemplating on going a bit farther, but we'll see. 
Now for the height node, you're going to want to bring it back away from the area start and width. So you're going to want a negative 0 0.1. Perfect. Ground reference node. I'm going to bring this back up. Depth node needs to be brought back up also. And you guys can mess with it. If you got a big planner, I know this is 12 row, but if you go a lot bigger and they don't necessarily flex in every row unit separate, then you're going to have to adjust your depth and ground reference node. This is just quick, easy to show you guys what is going on. A lot of people have already been messing with it. The nice part about this planner is every row unit is already separated. So therefore, all I got to do is jump back up to my work area parent part. And I start from the bottom so I don't have to constantly scroll down. And then I go back to my transform group right where I put the first one. And I just control C and control V. I did that one right. No, I didn't. Accidentally got two in there, so I'll delete that one. And now we are just going to save, but I like to leave my GE open. I gotta close this other one. And then we are going to go back to our planter file, open up our XML. All right, once you find you guys' work areas, base is sewing machine, ridge marker, ridge marker. And these are our work areas. What we are after is this first one. So when you open up GE, we are not looking at our first work area that we can save in there. We're looking at our first row unit work area. And we're looking at the work area start, width, and height. You guys want to copy the index path back to the node. Now, if you guys are using one that has all I3D mapped, it might be down at the bottom and everything, but you'll find it in here. It is pretty easy to do, or you can do it just like I am. Now that we have our first one set up, it is not on one or zero because we're not using them. We're starting with two. You guys want to copy this one work area. And this is the way I go. So that counts as your row unit one, two, three, four. Perfect. Now we have it all set up. So now all we got to do is double click on the two and you go to a three. Go to a four. Go to a four. Five. And so on. You get down to the bottom one. Obviously we are a little off. So I am correct with my nodes. And we are literally saving. Perfect. Go test in game. See if it works. Have fun guys. Welcome to Real Crop Ready. And... Let's blow this thing up later on.